climate problem is one of the pressing problems of our time. The planet is warming at an alarming rate. CO2 levels are now way higher than they have been in the last million years, and that is almost entirely due to human emissions. The Greenland ice sheet is melting at record pace. It loses nearly 30 million tons per hour. It's quite possible the sea level will rise by more than a meter over the next century. That will force many, many people to have to change where they live and the way that they live. It's undoubtedly the case that the ice is melting much faster now than it would have done if humans had not intervened. We haven't seen some of the weather patterns that we've seen before. Although we know it's going to be bad, we do have some control over how bad it will be. This is quite an important thing for us to think about for future generations. My name is Ian Hewitt. I'm a professor of applied mathematics and I'm a tutorial fellow at Trinity. My research is modeling the impacts of climate change. One of the big things that we're trying to do in understanding the climate is to understand and predict what might happen in the future. And we use computer models to do that. And we use mathematics to develop those computer models. The more the temperature warms, uh, the more we're pushing the bounds of what we actually understand about the way that these ice sheets work. We're pushing beyond what we know. The ice is extremely inaccessible, so when we use maths to try and understand what's going on in the places that we can't see or where we can't go. That's part of the power of maths. It actually tells us something that we can't access in any other way. My work is kind of at the coalface, and it's actually getting right under the hood of these computer models, which are run by people like the Met Office, and these feed into the uh, reports that are compiled by the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. I think everything about climate change at the moment is urgent. This is one of the most pressing things that we have to think about as humanity right now, and that's one of the things that really drives me forwards with this research. I grew to like maths all the time at school. It was something I found I was quite good at, and it was something that I never thought would be a career, but I never stopped enjoying it, and I just kept on doing it. <laughs> I think that maths has this innate beauty about it, and that you see this all over the natural world. Some of it is in symmetries, in the way that flowers bloom, spiral patterns in the head of a sunflower, the swirls in a river, waves on the ocean, the way that clouds form, tornadoes, the way that sparks fly out of a volcano. Some of the beauty and the simplicity of some mathematical patterns can really be seen in the landscape. And I think that that's part of what I find quite exciting about applying maths to some of these problems. As a mathematician, I like to talk to someone about how they see the world and I like to try and encode their understanding into the models that we we're creating. Some of the world's best minds are right here already. Being able to talk to people in other disciplines who are really at the top of their own field is a big benefit of being here in Oxford. I'm one of the math tutors at Trinity and we organise tutorials for the first and second year students when they've just started at university. The nice thing about a tutorial is that it's so individual. We usually have two or three students and we really get to engage with them in some discussion. I mean, these are bright, bright students and they've often got some really quite original ideas. We really try to encourage each other to learn from each other and to feed off the excitement that we all get from studying maths. In a maths degree especially, it's important not to be satisfied with an answer, but to ask why is that the answer? And some of the best students are the ones who can really probe your own understanding of the problem. It's quite a thrill seeing that journey all the way through with a few students who you get to know really quite well. Discovering really a new subject and all sorts of new ideas. For me as a teacher, it's one of the best parts of my job. Mm -hmm.